Sega's Biohazard Battle on Genesis, released in 1992, otherwise known in Japan as Crying Asame Senso. For those wondering, the title has jack shit to do with Capcom's Resident Evil at all. The story is set during the first Global Bio War, or G Bio War 1 for short, during which an all-new form of retrovirus breaks out throughout the planet of Avalon, or Averon if you prefer, as a means of retaliation from the enemy, thus unearthing the deadliest threats of all, namely hordes of unstoppable and ruthless biological forces. However, an orbiting space station, OP Odysseus, is actively encircling the planet, with the sole purpose of keeping any and all surviving humans alive until Avalon once again becomes inhabitable. Within said orbiting station, only a few remaining survivors are concealed and at rest inside cryogenic tanks, specifically the crew of the aforementioned Odysseus, and have awakened via its onboard computer centuries later. According to various planetary computer probes, areas of Avalon are deemed rather malignant despite being inhabitable, and as it turns out, it was nothing more than a debate of where the crew can lay the foundation for their new colony. Gameplay-wise, being more than just your typical horizontal shmup, the interstellar pilgrimage begins upon selecting one of four bioships. Orestes, Electra, Hecuba, and Polyxena, a red and blue bird and dragonfly hybrid ship, a red and green reptile and shrimp hybrid ship, not to mention it's the same creature seen at the title screen and is great for beginners, a brown and green ship resembling a grasshopper, and a golden purple ship resembling an eel, and arguably the best artificial vessel in the entire game, respectively. All of which sport a diverse area of speeds, their individual option pods, or power stars as they're aptly referred to, good for extra firepower and defense from enemy fire, and even sets of weaponry configurations, depending on which seed it obtains. Not to shift to one irrelevant tangent here, but does it look like those names are somehow related to Greek mythology? Also, must I mention that this game sports a simultaneous TWO-PLAYER MODE! As your bioship traverses from one area to another throughout planet Avalon, taking down waves upon waves of hideous mutoids, such as insects, crabs, worms, mechanisms, the works, you can actually make it fire off two types of shots, rapid auto-fire shots via the A button, and charge shots via B and C, thus creating an aura around your ship by holding down one of the aforestated buttons before releasing it. In terms of their weapon enhancements, four types of seeds can be obtained at any time after taking out certain enemies. Yellow, orange, green, and blue, all of which enable either fire petals, which are white-hot fireballs, or twin spin lasers, plasma rings, or homing seeker lasers, implosion pods, and either the Nova, an 8 way beam volley, or the Bond, a collection of enemy homing energy spheres that detonate upon contact, respectively, and can be further intensified by obtaining two more of the same initially retrieved seed. Be forewarned, however, not only will a different weapon be swapped out with your bioship's power level reset to 1 after procuring another seed, your bioship gets down power to shit all after it gets trashed, going down one life. You know, just like every other goddamn shmup out there. Concerning this game's main itinerary, your main bioship goes through a re-entry phase as it descends towards the barren as fuck planet, followed by a countless myriad of treks through the city ruins, the forest and jungle areas a bauxite mine, the deep underwater recesses, move-over jaws, an intense confrontation with a flying destroyer known as the G Biowar 1 Warjet, hell-bent on ending all existence on Avalon as we know it, unless every effort is made for the damn spacecraft to be eradicated at all costs, and finally the Biowar lab grounds themselves, all inhabited to the brink with those earlier recounted mutoid creatures, and the bosses, holy shit the bosses, ranging from a cycloptic plant slug gigantic crabs, and even a colossal bioworm sprouting out of a tree to name a few. Though this shmup might seem simple to some, and as ever, this is where the following subject comes into it all. In reality, this game's got more than enough horseshit to make sure your planetary crusade goes to complete dick all, thus screwing you over each goddamn chance it gets, which is why I strongly recommend keeping your main vessel out of harm's way, no matter how far it roams. Besides all that, the controls aren't that much of a bitch to get acquainted with, nor are they in any way, shape, or form complex or banal. Same spiel with the gameplay procedure. Relentless, yet sufficient as the challenge is, even for casual gamers, Biohazard Battle is something through which I wouldn't even go so far as to bum-rush my way. In my honest opinion, it's not as hard as the likes of Gradius, Crisis Force, Phalanx, Firepower 2000, Glaylancer, Toplan's Hellfire, or God forbid Naxxotsoft's Rekka, but holy shit on a croissant doesn't come goddamn close at times, folks! Bear in mind the one-hit deaths, the inhumanly unforeseeable beyond-belief enemy patterns, and even the intense high speeds at which these stages scroll, all of which will disorient your senses in a way you've never imagined possible, worse than even fucking hypnosis, god forbid. I mean, talk about the insurmountable odds being stacked against you! 
Prior to starting, you're allowed 3, 4, or 5 lives on the option screen, more of which you can accumulate by scoring, racking up a certain one up icon, Blue Moon rare as they are, and 9 continues, at which point should you decide on using up one of the latter, you're stuck with dick all, but starting your current stage all the fucking way back from square one! Despite that, you'll need each and every one of both throughout your excursion, not to mention lots of patience, willpower, and top notch focus, regardless of your progress. The graphics here are fucking glorious beyond description, especially for a 16-bit game released the same year as Sonic 2, Home Alone, Streets of Rage 2, Tasmania, Kid Chameleon, Gadget Twins, Echo the Dolphin, Turtles the Hyperstone Heist, Sunset Riders, Fighting Masters, Toxic Crusaders, Shikanda Forever Man, Lightning Force aka Thunder Force 4, Atomic Runner, The Steel Empire, Ernest Evans, Soul Deese, and even Tyrants fight through time amongst others. The majority of the main Bioship sprites, not to mention those of their opposing adversaries, and even the background and foreground elements were brilliantly designed and captured, animation-wise. Same spiel with the weapon effects, and even the enemy explosions when you eradicate the shit out of the ladder. Overall, the presentation's aged quite opulently, notwithstanding how prosaic some of its correlating elements might appear. Orchestrated by Shigeharu Isoda, otherwise known as KNU, who's also the director and programmer of this game, surprisingly enough, under his other alias, Kazumi Nasu, the overall soundtrack boasts its pulse pounding hybrid of bass heavy and percussive capabilities, tripping the hell out of even that of Taito's Darius, Konami's Axele, and especially Irem's R Type. Notwithstanding what others might assume in terms of the game's soundtrack being somehow abrasive due to the capabilities of the console's YM2612 sound chip by Yamaha, it's still nothing short of uplifting. While the first stage has its own original melody, later stages happen to possess a reprise or a twist to it in conjunction with the game's ominous atmosphere and contrasting settings, classified from lush to derelict. The sound effects are far from a total bore-fest and are a match made in heaven along with the circumstantial situations that take place throughout. And my top 5 favorites from this game alone are as follows. Stages 1 and 8, one whole track. Stages 2 and 6, another whole song. Stages 3 and 5 separately. And finally, the boss theme. In terms of replayability, it's definitive in every classic sense of the word, depending on not only your preferred Bioship and its capabilities, but also your preferred difficulty setting, which for the record matters a great deal if you wish to see the real ending, and of course your skill sets. Other than what I've laid down thus far, there's no denying that Biohazard Battle is one unforgettable, mind-blowing, ass-kicking out of this goddamn universe odyssey, unlike anything the world could possibly conceive. Therefore, I'd consider myself off my Christ-forsaken rocker to even contemplate passing this shit up. In spite of not standing out the way other shmups of its era did, mostly due to whatever flaws I might have pointed out, two of which I forgot about down the line, which I'll throw out there as a last minute considering what others did in the past about it, namely the semi-monotonous, unavailing slew of enemy confrontations, and of course the game's unoriginal aspects. Nevertheless, minor as these flaws are, if you're in the mood for something different to break the monotony of stereotypical shmups, I strongly recommend seeking out, acquiring, and or trying this overlooked choice out more than anything. It also goes without noting, for all the next-gen addicts out there, that Biohazard Battle is also available on the Wii Virtual Console and even Steam. I guarantee you, there'll be no ounce of lament doing so, and it'll make even Super Stardust Ultra look like SNK Playmore's Alpha Mission. Trust me! Anyways, comparisons aside, until then, this is the Hardcore Retro God signing off.